Hi, I'm Peter from Coffee Parts, and today we're looking at different style of coffee machines and their water pumps. Now, we're gonna look at each of these pumps individually in which machines they fit and how they operate and the pros and cons of each one. So the pumps came in three formats. Your vibrating pumps, which are mainly for your home domestic machines. Your rotary pumps, which is what most cafe machines have and your higher end home machines. And your geared pumps. And they're more your speciality world, high end commercial and high end home. Now we're gonna look at each of these pumps individually, which machines they are in, and how they kind of work, the pros and cons for each one. Let's get into it. Vibrating pumps. Now a vibrating pump uses a pulsating piston to draw water from the tank and push it through the boiler and the coffee pump. They're generally found on smaller home machines. What are they? Basically, they're this. This is a vibrating pump. Basically, you've got a piston that runs along here inside a coil. There's a magnet on the piston. When the coil gets current, the piston goes back and forward, basically pulsating the water through the outlet of the pump up to 60 pushes per second. So with the vibrating pumps, they only operate at one pressure. So to control that pressure at the group head, what we normally do is use a bypass valve. So a bypass valve is like this little valve here. And what it does, it sits post the pump. So the pump pushes the pressure at a stable pressure, and then the bypass valve removes some of that water back into the water reservoir, effectively bringing down that pressure to whatever pressure you want to adjust it at, call it nine bars. Now the thing with this is, these pumps are small, so they really fit into the smaller domestic machines. They run only from a tank, you can't actually feed them in with line pressure, and they're less acceptable to lime scale buildup. So they really are great for your entry level home machines, but they are a bit noisy. The other thing with them is they take a little bit longer to ramp up to pressure compared to say a rotary pump. And once they get up at pressure, because it's pulsating, that pressure is sort of like vibrating, so it's not perfect eight or nine bars. In saying that, they're super affordable, they tend to last four or five years, and they're a really good option. An example of a machine with this kind of pump would be something like this Gadget Classic, or Ranchilio Silvia, Rocket Apertamento, that kind of machine. So you're talking about entry level all the way up to the beginning of where the machines really kind of skyrocket up in, in performance. So to see how a vibrating pump performs and sounds, we've loaded some coffee into the gadget here, and we're gonna just run an espresso, taking a focus on listening to that vibrating pump. So we're just gonna run a shot. You can see that vibration, you can hear it ramp up. And that's an espresso from a vibrating pump machine. Next, let's look at a rotary pump and how that differs in sound and also in its extraction. Now the rotary pump is probably the most common pump you see commercially and what you start seeing in more high-end home machines. Now a rotary pump is this. This is a pump, but the pump doesn't work with the motor. Now with these motors, the way they work is when they get current, they need a capacitor to discharge, get them going, and when they get current, they spin this shaft off the pump. As the pump, the shaft spins, water goes in the pump from here and out. So the more it spins, the more water is getting pushed in and out, in and out. So with these pumps, they can go from either a reservoir tank or you can plumb them in. They're fine to be fed in water. So when you do plumb them into your mains pressure, the advantage you get is machines that have pre-infusion. You get a pre-infusion based on your lines pressure. Now the lines pressure does fluctuate. So one thing you tend to get is a pressure limiting valve. So this goes on the inline pressure. So pressure goes in one way and out the other and it comes in a consistent pressure. So just say your line pressure varies between, call it five and six bars. You set these at three and a half bars. And what you set this at will mean you have that your pre-infusion and then the pump just lifts the pressure from the three and a half bar to whatever your set point is. Normally an eight or nine bars. So effectively, you got water coming in from your line through a pressure limiting valve. That's running through the pump and out the group head. And that's your pre-infusion. Once you activate your pump, that's a full pressure. And they do tend to ramp up quicker from that pressure to the top pressure than a vibrating pump. A vibrating pump has a bit of a lag. Also, when it gets the pressure, it tends to be more stable. Now, rotary pumps tend to be, if 
you're looking at domestic machines, you're thinking about the Rocket Mozza Fiat R, Giotta R, R Cinquentotto. It might be the Victoria Arduino Prima 1, Lamazoko Linea Mini GS3 AV MP. You're talking about that level of machine. And they really are the top end of home machine and the most common commercial machines. Now, the reason why these aren't on smaller domestic machines is physically it's a big unit, it's a heavier unit. So you need to be in a bit of a bigger machine to be able to physically fit this in the machine. Two common brands of pumps are the Procon pump and the Flutotech pump. Now these pumps actually offer commercial unit. A lot of times in the domestic units they are identical but they just have a shorter shaft here just to basically save a bit of room. But let's put these all back to the side and run an espresso out of this R Sequentoto so we can hear the difference and see the difference between the vibrating pump we'll use in the Gaggia Classic to this rocket. So just running a shot of this rocket R Sequentoto, we're actually running this from a tank. So we're, it's a rotary pump running from a tank. So pre-infusion is not really gonna work as well as if we had it plumbed in. So we're just gonna run it full shot and basically take note to listen to the difference between the vibrating pump before and the rotary pump now. You can see it's a lot quieter and from a coffee perspective, a lot more stable. It's a lot smoother. You can almost not hear the pump. And as we release there, a lot less channeling in the coffee and overall, just a nicer espresso. But in saying that, the vibrating pump and the rotary pump both still do perform well. Now, geared pumps. Geared pumps are traditionally used for pressure profiling to better emulate any profile curve you want. So vintage lever, even a rotary pump, or being able to really draw out that coffee X amount of times, X amount of bars, and play around with it. There are two ways to do pressure profiling. I'll be using, say, a rotary pump we saw before and a needle valve to control the flow of the water or with a geared pump. So this is a geared pump here. Basically, you use the pressure transducer to understand the pressure and then the pump to really be able to control up and down based on current. Now commercially, it was seen in something like Lama Zorco Strata EP and domestically one of the machines that runs it is this Rocket R91. And what that does is, using the pressure transducer and the pump and current, you can really draw out what you want that coffee to do. Say a few seconds at three bars and go to six, nine, or maybe even play around up and down in between. You can really stretch out that body or that pre-infusion or post-infusion and really play with coffee. We have done a video focusing on pressure profiling. If you click here, it's a video with Paul Asquith on this R91. So we're not gonna focus so much on what pressure profiling coffee is, but more on this pump and what it can do. So if we actually jump into this machine and do a coffee, we can see by moving this, we're gonna ramp up and down the speed of the pump, which is what you can't naturally do on the vibrating or rotary, with the exception on the rotary of a Slayer 1 group, where you've got the needle valve and does it, but mainly you'd be using a geared pump. So we've got some coffee loaded in, and let's just run a shot and play around with the pressure so you can hear that pump ramp up and down. So if we move this dial here, we can start it off. As you can see, it's starting off at two and a half bars. And now it's gonna ramp up to eight bars in this pressure profile. Now we just pull it back down to five bars and it's gonna finish it off at two and a half bars. Noticing how quiet this pump is and how much control it had between. So what it does is, that's just a profile that was set in the machine you could be drawing out as you want. Every second you could be moving it from X amount to Y amount and really draw out what that espresso looks like to you. And that's what a gear pump can do. Now, every machine we feature today, the Gaggi Classic, the Rocket R Cinquentotto and this R91, we have done independent reviews on each one and we'll leave that in the description below if you wanna watch a video on each of those units independently. Thank you for watching this video on water pumps. This is one of our videos in a series of parts of a coffee machine. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you've got any questions for me on these parts or any other parts of a coffee machine, hit me up in the comments below. And like always, if it's brought you value, please subscribe. Thank you.